Let us go ahead and get ourselves going today. Welcome back to session seven of 120C, 220C. Uh, I apologize for being gone last time. Jury duty sometimes happens a little bit unexpectedly. You're sort of hedging your bets and hoping <laughs> that like uh, you're not getting a call. But fortunately, it only took about half a day. You know, but, uh, we are back. So uh, hopefully you were able to go through and take a look at the videos, which are actually pretty close last Thursday relative to sort of what we would have done in class together and like uh, what was shown in the videos from winter quarter. If you were following the winter quarter videos because you were already gone, super, you're in great shape in terms of you don't even know how I was gone. Uh, for the rest of you, uh, hopefully that gave you a pretty good start of what you want to be going on with the assignment. Although, what I want to do today is, based on some questions that are coming up in office hours, is really just go through an example of like you know how I might approach something like a simple structure for assignment one, and just think specifically about oh, it's the difference between doing things with curves versus reference curves. Really, kind of thinking about what the difference is between dynamo geometry versus Revit geometry. And also just think about, oh, this whole issue of when you define things using geometry, how you can start with simple things like lines to derive it, but then um, add you know, more depth to it by replacing lines with more like uh, curves or sine curves or something like that. Just kind of go through a simple example of how you can kind of do something like this. Okay. So to get going today, I'm actually going to start just you know, kind of talking about projects, looking at examples that I think would be driven out a lot of what people are having questions with uh, kind of in the assignment. But as we do this, like, please jump in with your questions about the assignment, because I think many of you are sort of in similar places, or I don't know, just you know, for this first part, be especially interactive. So I'm just going to do this from scratch. This is like, you know, totally off the cuff. But go ahead and ask your questions as we go to see if we can sort of uh, make sense of it and give you the most help for what you need. Okay, so I'm just going to go over as a starting point. Again, the idea is I'm trying to create some sort of a expandable structure, something that's resizable, and think about putting in both some uh, kind of rib elements, some sort of a structural element that would follow some of the curves, and also a surface or um, some panels on the surface. We talked about in office hours with some folks, you don't necessarily need the surface, but you do need the points, okay, and that's enough to get you going. But let's go ahead and kind of show you what I mean. So. Here is what I have in mind. Uh, here I am hanging around in the rabbit, just to give you a sense of, oh, we'll start with some strategizing, just to uh, kind of think about really what it is I might come up with. Let me do this, let me exit full screen, just so uh, I get my uh, little kind of drawing tools available. Okay, so what I'm thinking about I'll finish flashing for a second, is doing something like this. I'm thinking about, oh, something that kind of has like an arky shape like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'll start by just sort of extruding that kind of into the background there. So I'm going to create some sort of arky shape. And I'm going to basically just sort of stretch it out, sort of like that, so that ultimately it kind of looks like that. And as I think about defining this, you know, the way I might approach doing that is to think about drawing some different points and then making lines out of them. So for example, for this little arky shape, I could go through and say that, hey, I'm going to go through and have a point. Maybe it'll be made out of three different points. Okay. And then for each of those different points, what I'm going to really do is just extrude it back into the background there. So, I'm going to just draw a line that follows like this, a line that follows like this, and a line that goes back over here. So as we start with this, it really is this notion of really creating just three different points in space that can be joined together into a curve, and then going through and for each of those, just giving them some sort of a difference. If I want to think about these being x and z, I'm going to give them a y that's going to set them back in space. But just really going through and kind of creating the like points on this side, okay, and joining those together as curves. So if I can go through and really just start defining some points, okay, and connecting them together, then I can really, given those points, if those are really my defining points, come up with almost everything else I need. 
because if I want to go through and create a series of different ribs, if this was a concourse that could become very, very long, what I can do is subdivide the yellow lines by however many kind of increments I want. I can change the Y value to sort of push the uh, green points further back into the background, really decide how many different intermediate points I want on the yellow lines. Okay, that would sort of create the structure elements that way. In terms of uh, panelizing it, what I can start thinking about doing is really taking these curves and sort of subdividing them both in terms of kind of the height and also the depth to come up with an incrementing scheme for what the panels to look like. Okay. And as we go through and do that, the interesting thing is some of you have done it by going through and taking the curves and making a surface and then subdividing the surface. Others can you just take the points and lines. And as long as you get groups of points and lines, you can kind of analyze that. But let's just go ahead and start by doing something like this. So my strategy is I'm going to go through and plant some three points, all with different x's and z's, but really all of the same y. Then I'm going to introduce a variable that will let me kind of introduce the y. Okay, make a curve here, make a curve there, and then just start um, combining and subdividing to go through and create all the points I want. For the final thing, just as a preview of what I'm going to do for our example here, what I'll think about is if I want to introduce a little bit of a wave to this, what I can think about is Oh, if this thing is really defined by three different sort of curves, or three different lines right now, what I can think about doing is even just replacing one of the lines with, as opposed to a single straight line, sort of a line where it has the same x's and y values, but maybe the z's, I'm going to put a little variation in. So as opposed to all being at the same constant z, okay, for each of those, I'm going to go through and compute some sine value and put some sort of waviness between them. Okay, so that's the overview of where I'm going for this first example. But I think for a lot of people, that'll, it's fairly similar to what you're trying to do. Okay, I'll do it with straight lines. We can do it with curves. If you look at the parametric stadium, that's all done with arcs. But it's really the same sort of operation, but I'll do it with lines for right now. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, let's just do that yeah. together, because I think it'll actually, it'll bring out a lot of uh, kind of similar questions. Okay, so if I'm going to do something like this, one thing is really which environment you're going to work with. If you work in the Revit project environment, okay, the Revit project environment is great for placing adaptive components and panels. It's not so good for putting reference points. Okay, so we don't need to put reference points. If we had a family and we defined sort of a shape by pushing and pulling reference points, we may have some reference points, but you don't actually need them. For this. Okay, so I'm going to sort of think about doing most of my geometry definition just in Dynamo and then placing things in the Revit project environment out of that geometry. Okay. Um, yeah. One of the small differences that some of you have encountered is when you put things into the Revit environment, you can do some overriding of the color. That actually works within the Revit project environment. It doesn't work in the family environment. So, it's almost sort of too confusing now. We have a project environment, we have a family environment, we have a dynamo environment. But for the most part, we tend to work in the project environment and the dynamo environment. The family environment is really only when we kind of need to change things that are going to put into a Revit project. So hopefully that won't make too big a difference to you. If you are struggling with that one, let's talk about your specific project. And we can like figure out a way to kind of transpose it to make it into a project. But it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm going to start over here just in Dynamo. And again, we're making it up as we go. So don't feel bad. We can make this be anything you want to. Okay, I'm going to start by just creating some x, y, z points. Okay, so I'm going to do some point by coordinates. I'm going to create three different point by coordinates. Well, let's do one, two, three. Again. Well, let's go ahead and put in some values there. If, for example, one thing I want to do is if the base of this thing I want to have started at 0, 0, 0, let's put that in as the first point. And it defaults to 0, 0, 0, but if you want to be explicit, it's not working. 
So you don't even have to put that in, you can leave X blank? Yes, okay. anytime you leave it uh, blank, it'll just default to zero. Okay, so there's one point there. If I want to put a point above it, oh, how about all, again, I'm going to let Y sort of say constant, you know, let that be how we make the concourse longer or the bus stop longer. How about for my second point up top here, oh, I'll put X at like 10 and Y at, or Z at 30, something like that. So I'll go like just 10, 0 again, because I want to keep the Y's constant, and 30. Again, these can be sliders. Sliders would be a more elegant way of doing this, because then you could uh, have these things uh, change dynamically. Now it's not looking very good. Oh, there it is. Just took a minute for it to cut, catch up right there. Okay, for the last one, I'll just make that little hump coming over. I'll say the X is gonna be 20, the Y is gonna be zero, and the Z is gonna be 20. Now, people have done this different ways, and don't worry if you've defined your logic in a different way. This is one way to do it. Yeah, I know people have looked at the front and the end point and tried to sort of compute where the intermediate point would be uh, mathematically. There's a lot of ways you could do it, but there's sort of one way to do it. Okay, so this is my one set of three points. If I want to take all three of those points and just start making a curve at them, there's two ways you can do this. If you are doing it in a family, you can say, let's make reference points out of this, and then we can make a curve by reference points. But you actually don't need to. You can just do it right over here, where we have points. We can just say curve by points. And that's probably the simpler way. And the reason there's a slight advantage to doing it this way is if we do curve by points, and I'll define it by points. I'll get you out of the way here. It, um, if we're doing it all just in the dynamo geometry, it's really just quicker. It doesn't uh, need to work with Revit, so it's all just happening mathematically. Okay, I want to get three points to create this curve. In order to do that, I just need to put them in a list. So I'll say a little list create. Oops, I don't want to do it that way. Actually, I could do it that way. Say so list create over here. Three atoms there. Bring them on over. I should have some nerves curve. Okay, so let's pause there for a second. Most of you, I think, have been defining curves all sorts of fun ways. Again, we can add sliders to this. We can do whatever we want to go through and you know, kind of make it work. But this is going to be fine. Now, if I wanted to go through and create the same curve on the back side, but I wanted to be 100 feet into the depth or something like that, no worries. I'm just going to add another little variable. Okay, if I want to do this, okay, let's just, I'll just make a nice little group out of this. Create. the first defining curve. Okay, for that second one that's back there in the background, that's gonna, it's gonna be so, so similar, but the only thing difference is it's gonna have these slightly different uh, Y values to them. So let me go ahead and I'll just put a nice little integer slider in there. That way I can go through and, could be a number slider too. Say number slider. It's really just uh, giving me the ability to kind of really quickly stretch the thing out into the distance. Okay, zero to 100 is fine. Actually, I'm going to take out the zero as the minimum because it really can't be zero. If it's zero, we get ourselves in trouble. So I'll let it be one to 100. So for that second one, I'm really just going to take this, I'm going to copy that whole block over there. And I'll say the second defining curve. And just go ahead, and as opposed to all those zeros, which aren't so good looking, I will take this number and plug it in as the y values. 
Now, this is making two things that are parallel to each other. I could have done it differently. But so there's two curves that are sort of separated by one, They're separated by, by some distance right now. Now, that's actually sufficient. We have everything we need to basically like make this structure right now. And the idea is whenever you can, to find things as, with as few defining curves as possible. So if you have a nice linear structure like this, it's basically an extrusion. That's kind of easy to do with just you can do with one curve, because you can just mathematically say what the distance is to extrude it back in the background. If you have kind of a curvaceous structure, for example, if you have a shell, you might want to go ahead and have some radiuses that kind of go off at, oh, some sort of different angle, and that will work too. Okay, there's, we can do it around kind of a cone or around uh, like the parametric stadium, just following the arcs around there. That's okay. But that is at some level you're just going to create some defining curves. And from those defining curves, we can create everything else we need. For example, one thing we can do is if you think about the really being lines that connect the first and the last points, the end points on each of those. That would probably be useful to connect. Those are going to be like top and bottom edges. And we're going to subdivide those later on to figure out what the intermediate points are. So let's go ahead and just do that mathematically. So if I say that I want to have uh, some lines, I'll say line by start point and end point. Again, I'm going to keep it lines right now to kind of be very simple. I can make these arcs or something else like that too. But if I just grab the first point and the first point down here, okay, and that's going to be my defining line one. I'm going to basically create some other lines to copy and paste that. I'll take the second point and connect the second point over here. And we'll do the same thing for the third point. But what I'm slowly but surely doing is kind of coming in at it all sides, just uh, in terms of defining that. Let me get the third point, it's down here somewhere. There it is. Not up there. So I got these three different points, or these three different lines kind of hanging around over here. Now, that's actually pretty close to sort of where we want to get started. Again, what we're going to do is a couple of different things. We are going to take these lines and subdivide them into the number of ribs or the number of structure elements we want. We're going to take the curves and subdivide them based upon how many panels we want kind of to follow up the surface. So we could really do this in any order, but oh, let's think about how right now I just have sort of uh, all these different points at the corners. What I want to think about doing is just sort of adding the intermediate points. So I can do that in a number of different ways. If I want to think about doing, oh, breaking this into a number of ribs, what I can do is take those three lines and say curve, point at parameter, and then break it into a number of ribs. If I want to do it this way, I can say, let's take all those curves and uh, just break them again by the number of uh, panels we want to have in each column. It's really about the same. Okay, so you could really do this too either way. I, I'm going to do it, I think, by breaking the lines and then breaking columns out of lines. You could do it out of curves and then sort of make multiples that way. Either way sort of works. But what I have in mind is, it's going to be two things. I'm going to subdivide, and then I'm going to do a little transposing so I can grab the like points and join those together into curves, and I'll subdivide those curves. OK, so let's see if this makes sense. I got three lines. That's looking pretty good. And what I'm thinking about doing is doing the same thing to all three of those different lines. So I'll do a little list create, because I sort of want to make a list. Well, uh, <clears throat> Help me out. Okay, a little list create action. This again, if I make a list of all three of them, 
that'll just make it easy to operate on all three. I don't have to do it this way, but this kind of just makes it a little bit easier. And once I've list created, I got those three, I can say curve, point at parameter. Okay, and this is where I'm doing my subdividing. So I can take the lines across, that part's good, but I also need to go through and say how I want to subdivide them. So right now, I'm not doing very much in there. Okay. In terms of the parameters that I want to put in there, what I'm thinking about is I want to go through and go 0 to 1, and it's going to give me a number of points between 0 to 1. If you want there to be a rib or a structural element at each of the points, okay, that'll be super. We'll just say the number of ribs or the number of structural elements, whatever it is. Okay, and we'll go 0 to 1 and use that. So I can say 0 to 1. Call it the number of, oh, I'll call it, uh, I'll call it ribs. Actually, what's that? I need to fill in something for the number of ribs. So I can, if I want to fill in a number there, I can do that. If I want to put an integer slider in there, yeah, it's a little bit more elegant. So I'll do a little integer slider action. Now, realize since the number of ribs has to be a whole number, okay, integer slider does make sense. put some more of these in here. Okay, We don't have as many points as we'd like to. And the reason is curve pointed parameter is only giving us a couple points right now. So watch out for this. A lot of us hit this one. You'll say over here, I, I expect to have like three rows of uh, 11 points each, but I only have three points. And the reason is when it's doing this, it takes three items and 11 items, and it's using the shortest right now. So it's only giving, returning three things. So if I want three by 11, what I got to do is just change the lacing on this from shortest to cross product. And then all of a sudden, you can see I get all 11 points on all three of those. 33 points. And again, this is why I like doing it just sort of right within Dynamo is that the Dynamo geometry is very quick to compute. It doesn't take the time of going to Revit and placing the reference point and finding the curve and pulling it back. So it's very, very quick to just do it right within Dynamo. The same thing works. I could have taken all these points, I could have reference points, then grabbed the um, uh, points or the curves out of Revit and like I said, curve and what's called dereferencing a curve. Uh, that's how you get on that. But you can just work with it as a dynamo geometry, but it's just even quicker. It's like it's reporting all sorts of different things about, uh, like, uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm used to doing it. It's, it's telling me about walk updates. OK. Um, we've got these curves. Here's the deal. I have all these different curves, all these curving points of parameters. If I would like to start by drawing a little line within Dynamo to indicate where all these different ribs are going to be, what I can do is take all these points, and what I want to grab them is in groups where the first, the seconds, the thirds all come together. So I need to just do a little what's called transposing. <laughs> So I'm going to take my 28 groups, or three, okay. and I'm going to transpose it, and I'm going to get actually three, three groups, groups of 20. 20. Yeah, exactly. Do 28 groups of three. Super. Okay. Now with these, once again, I can go through and do the curve. 
if I want to do make a curve there, I can go back to curve by points. I can spell. And it'll make the curves going in that direction so you can sort of see where all the ribs are. these ribs in here. I'm going to say, oh, adaptive component. I need to go through and find some nice three-point adaptive components. So let's see what I have available to myself. Actually, just so you can sort of see, that's what's happening back over in Revit land sort of the preview of all that. Okay, so if I'm looking for an adaptive three-point component, let's see what I got. I'll go out to uh, insert. I'll load something in there. And, oh, I didn't put out any examples for today just yet. Let's go to 120C and I'll find something in the session six examples. I got for adaptive components. I got my three-point tapered tube. I got a three-point square truss. I got a three-point line. I got a wire truss. Any preferences? Would you like to see this with trusses or tapered tubes? Trusses. Trusses. Okay, let's go for this wire truss. So I'll say, let us take its family types. You have to sort of tell it what we're after. Let's go on you. Something has my mouse, because I'm not actually able to type. It's gonna, that's there. Let's get back over here. That looks like that's odd. Hmm. Hang on. Who has one else? Interesting. I can save. Okay. I got it back here. No, it doesn't. Okay. Never mind. Family types. Okay. So we'll get that little three point truss as our family type. I have lists of three points. Let's just make sure this looks right. Oh, those are curves. This is the one that actually has that. What I need to do is feed this thing groups of three points. I need to get a list that has like little sublists of three points. This looks like it's actually pretty good. So if that is looking good, I'll take that and pop them in. Okay. This is where it may take a moment to do it because it's going to generate some Revit geometry. Looks like it did it.
all those little trusses are in there. Looks like the truss parameter for the width of the truss is actually pretty large relative to uh, the spacing I have right now. So I can play around. If I want to go through and, for example, oh, just re decrease the number of trusses, so, or the number of ribs, so it's not 28, that'll spread them out a little bit. The other thing I can think about doing is just making the whole length of the structure longer, so they're spread out over a longer distance. Either of those things could work. So let's think about this. So over here, as opposed to being 50, let's make it 100 away. So they're further out. Should do it. It says run started. Looks like it's still regenerating. So they're hanging around over here. Okay, so we're actually in pretty good shape in terms of what's going on. Let me just pause there for a second because I've just been sort of like, you know, whipping this on out here in terms of like uh, defining lines, kind of putting some subdividing uh, lines, connecting it and connecting the points together. But let's just pause and see what questions you guys are having relative to what you're trying to do because this is one way to approach it, just try to find as much geometry as possible in Revit and then start subdividing. From here, I can start, I can analyze these, we'll do that in just a second, but let's just start with the whole notion of your defining geometry. Okay, so in terms of like how you're defining your object, like yeah, go um, Does this make it possible to then change a list if you define the geometry um, within Revit? So if you want to adjust the height um, and make that a variable, um, it's kind of difficult to change all of your z variables within a long list mm -hmm. um, in the Dynamo. So it, it, is that another um, so let's area where you could do this? In terms of, are you thinking in terms of like the z's on the ends? Or yeah, the could you like set that and make kind of the French fry bend, um, like have a variable height and then uh, upload that sure. into Although we'll the Dynamo? Do is we'll do a little kind of thinking about it. You're onto a very good question. So here's the deal. Yeah, we define the heights of the endpoints, mm -hmm. okay, on both sides, and then we just said let's do a straight line between them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we can do is we can this is what I was trying to do with Diana right before the break. We went through and we connect the end to the end and said, this is a lovely point. It's got a Z value, it's a straight line value, but what if we said Let's take the old Z, the Z that it is, and just introduce an offset, a positive or a negative offset. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can get the whole kind of curly edged sine wave thing into okay. it. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. That's coming up. That's okay. the two steps. That's good. Okay, we're going to do that. But yeah, we can take all these points. We could, if we want to just define, change the defining points. Okay, so. Let's say for the first curve on it, at the end over here, that's going to be oh, like 30 or something like that. It'll go through and redo that. It'll do everything else. It's a straight line interpolation between those things. Okay. So this is more like they go in a linear fashion kind of zipping on down that way. Okay. But we could also introduce more of a curve in there. But often what I'll do is I'll start by defining lines and then do diffs from lines as the way to go through and introduce that. In the same way, this is kind of curling over like that. If I wanted to, this is going what it's got the Y. If I wanted to introduce you know, more of an X so it's sort of swept out at the bottom back over there, I could do that just in terms of, oh, this first X point, so, or the second X point. Like right now, the second defining curve for the end point of it, let's take a look at where that is. It's down over here. So right now the X is kind of hanging around at, I guess it's right there, it's zero, zero, zero. If I wanted to go through and say that, hey, I don't want it to be there, I'll make it like minus 20. Again, what I'm doing is I'm moving the defining curve, and then what's going to happen is the intermediate lines that are uh, joining them, they kind of go sweep on out, okay, and then the whole structure will adapt to it. 
So now it's a little more uh, curvaceous in terms of what, or actually, I take it's it's more slopey in terms of what's going on, but it's not really quite curvaceous. But it's interesting. <laughs> okay, now, so I did this with a three-point truss. I could just as easily have done that with a three-point tube or something like that. I just need some element that has the number of points, or I'll need to sort of change the number of points. So um, if, for example, I wanted to do it with a three-point tube, I'll come over here and just load in the family. 3.2. What do I got there? My little 3.2 tubes right here. Bring it in. So with that selected, I just need to find where it is over here. My graph isn't very neat right now. What I typically would do is take, like, for example, this issue of the integer slider you know, for the number of ribs and pull it over in a really obvious place or put it in a bright color so you can sort of see what it is. So I'll say, like, three-point tapered two. I'll swap that in there. So for the most part, if Revit can create your object, it will. I think it's running in the background there right now. This looks interesting. It looks like the size of my tapered tube is really relatively large relative to the geometry. So I could go ahead and take a look at its parameters. It looks like the radius of the tube right now is 3. OK, that's a little bit large. So if I wanted to say that the radius of the tube was smaller, I could, for example, either do that in Dynamo, or I could grab all these and change the parameter there to say, oh, maybe 1.0 would be an easier thing to follow. If you to change the radius of the tube for each one as it progressed, how would you do that? Ah, that's a very good question. It really is an instance parameter, so we can, uh, what would you like to change it based on? We could change it based, you can make it a wave if you want to, or yeah. something like that. It's really, we're just going to find some variable, like in this case, the y is the thing that changes from one to one. So we're just going to find some way of taking the y value and relating that to a thickness. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say element set parameter. So let's show you that. That's actually kind of an interesting question. Looks like those didn't change. Oh, it just changed in the middle. Oh, so much for my interesting tube. OK, let's go through and, oh, there's more than one way to beat this, given my, uh, well, actually, yeah, let's do this. The bell on the tube's a little bit too big. This is, I think some people, have, you know, some of you run into this. It looks like I don't have a good parameter for changing the end of the tube, so I'm gonna go through and you know, edit that family and see if I can change that too. What do I got in here? I can do something called, oh, I want to x-ray it. That just shows me the different profiles. Let's try this. If I wanted to give, oh, let me show you where the, it's defined in terms of the, the radius right now. That right there is the radius of the tube. That's the middle of the tube right now. If I want to give myself parameters to control the ends also, which is probably the best way to do it. I could come back over here and say that I would like to go through and add a measurement. Okay. I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to choose that. And this is how, again, when we start changing parameters, adding parameters, I can add a parameter by choosing that. And I'll say, I call it the end radius. And I'll let that be an instance parameter. That'll then give us the ability to change it on a base, you know, a rib by rib basis. Okay, let me zoom on out. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Come on over here. Again, I'll do a little measurement. I can just do it by turning on that. Let's say the end radius of this thing is also a parameter. 
So let's just check this to sort of make sure this actually works. Before we even put it into Revit and start trying to make it happen programmatically or automatically, let's just see if we can get it to work here. So right now, you see the ends of the tube are very big and fat. There's 10.6. Let's just go ahead and try making that 5, see if it works. Again, I always test things here. Okay, that seemed to have worked. See, see where it breaks. Because a lot of times, in fact, I'd say most of the time, it's not breaking in Dynamo. It's actually breaking over in Revit somewhere. Okay, I can load this back into my project. In fact, I like this guy so much. I'm even going to save him just because it's a... Uh, this is going to be my three-point taper tube resizable ends. which is going to be fine. Load it in. OK, put it over there. Does it matter if it's a type or an instance? It does in terms of whether when you change it, it'll change all of them at once, or whether you want to be able to change it on an uh, instance by instance basis. So we're going to do it as instance, just so that I can show what you asked. Okay. Okay, so here we are. I'll change it to three-point taper tube with a resizable end. And actually, are you, would it be helpful? I, I know I've probably lost a lot of folks along the way. You know, shall I upload this example to CourseWorks so you can pull it down and just sort of be playing with the same one? Let me do that. Let's just do that so that you have it available to play with. Okay, so let's save this out. Just to give everyone a chance to catch up. This is, oh, da, 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 da. shelter resizable ribs. I'm also going to go ahead and save the dynamo graph so you can have them both and play along with me. So save this as. Again, we'll put that over there somewhere. Resizable ribs. Graph. Okay, so let me put those up on. That's interesting. It's complaining that some of them it's having trouble with. That's, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. That usually means there's something about the Revit object that's just having trouble creating itself. I'm just going to delete it. You'll see there may be some missing ones right now. But that'll be okay. We'll see if we can fix that together. Okay, so with those, let's come back out here and put it back up on campus for you. Okay, a little parametric design. Files. Session seven. Don't worry about those examples yet. I haven't done anything with them. But let's go ahead and pull these out. Where have I been putting all this? Oh, I've been putting it in the session seven folder, have I? Okay, over there. popular must share these with you. Okay, beautiful. Okay, go ahead and pull those down if you can and get all get those opened up and we'll think about our next strategy because there are two interesting and relevant questions floating around out here. One is could we take all those ribs and kind of resize them individually have as instance parameters? 
that'll be cool. The other one will be, hey, can I go through and put a little bit of a curvature on this or a little uh, kind of variation so it's not a straight line taper between the front and the back? Okay, and we'll look at both of those things. Okay, so just give me a give me a sign when you got what the, the, the uh, download on your side. I'm gonna do a little looking over here and sort of see where it broke so badly. Didn't like my three point taper too. Look, didn't like it at all, did it? Well, that's not very nice. Yeah, mine has loaded yet. It has what? Mine has. It's on calendar, right? Oh. I um, it, it's on Canvas, so go up there. But, but under Calendar, the session files? Oh, go, go to the actually, I didn't oh, upload the it there, just thing. the actual okay. things as files. Cool. Okay. Go up there. Let's see what's going on here. Why doesn't it like that? That was such a promising little object. I thought it was going to be good. I'm going to change it back to the three point tubes. That worked. Now, why don't you like my one with the resizable ends? Let me try this. I'm going to just try changing that individually to one. Because again, it'll only do things that you can do manually. It says it can't create it. Why is that? I bet it has something to do with the sizes. Let's go. I'm just going to try something. Uh, You look so promising over here, so let's see what it's having. It's probably having some problem where it's just, oh, somehow the relative size of the two things, it's like folding on itself or something like that. If it's three in the middle and five at the end, let's try, just, let me try changing this around a little bit. I'm gonna try changing it to being very skinny in the middle. Let's see if that works. It seems like it wants to work. at the end. That again seems like it wants to work. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to work manually and then try again. So I got this guy it's got that fold. That's what I'm a little worried about. If it folds too much, it might have trouble making it. That's still... I'm trying to think why it's just having trouble with that. Good point tapered two for sizable ends. Got two of them there. Let me try that. Again, still having trouble making that. Hmm. I don't know. I'm really kind of wondering about what the problem is there. Well, let's see if we can come up with another object that will work instead. Because again, we can spend some time debugging this object, but that's not the point. Although, is it something about them being too close? Let me try this. I'm going to try spreading the geometry out a little bit. I'm going to keep on saying I'm not going to try debugging it, but then I do. Um, We'll take it and say, I'm wondering, usually or often what will happen is it's just that the fold is too tight. There's something about the fold that's really just sort of confusing to it. So if I take the second one, or it's really the first one even, and I want to try and make the third point go further out. 
So it's currently at 20, it's 30 high. That's fine. What I want to do is actually, I'm going to make it like 50. And make that not flat. Oh, what if it's because it's the flat right there? We'll see. should be okay in terms of regenerating some geometry. That should be fine there, 25, 50. Oh, it looks like it didn't go very far. Again, I'll, I'll stop debugging this in just a second because that's not the essence of what we want to cover today. Got all that. working in the background there. Okay, so it's able to do it with the non-tape, or with the uh, non-resizable tube. Let's see if it's going to do it with the resizable tube. <laughs> Let's do this. Let us go ahead, take our break now for five. When you come on back, we'll go ahead and play games with uh, kind of the sine wavy stuff happening over here. I'll see if I figure out what's going on with the size of the There's just something that I'm not seeing in the Revit geometry. Something's holding us and not letting it generate. But let's see if we can get that figured out. But in the meantime, you go, go take a break. Come on back in five, and we will get going again.